Good morning. We'll give everybody a minute to get to their places, you know. <laughs> it's a shame you guys like each other. I mean, you know. It is good to welcome you this morning. My name is Michelle Vernon. I get to be the pastor here at Edinburgh First United Methodist Church, and it is my joy to welcome you into a time of worship this morning. We have uh, several announcements, as we have had all through November. I know you find that shocking. Um, that we have a lot of stuff going on, but we are a healthy, vital, thriving church, and so that's just the deal. Um, so let's get right to announcements. On your seats, you will see little slips of paper like this. Does everybody have a little slip of paper? Every couple of chairs should have a pen. On these slips of paper, as part of our offering each week, we will be writing down how God has blessed us that week. And so every week, we're going to come forward for the offering, those two boxes that are up there, and you can make your gifts of your pledge, your tithes, your offerings, but you will also bring forward your blessing of God on how God has blessed you. We're going to be purposeful about how we keep God's grace and goodness in front of us, 
And that is an offering. We make an offering of praise. So start getting in the habit. You're going to see these on your chairs forever um, or until I run out of paper. But make sure you fill out your blessing slip to bring forward in the offering. Next week is the first Sunday of Advent. Everybody, stop panicking. It's okay. We've got a little time till Christmas. There's only room for one panicker, and I'm it. Uh, And so uh, it is also our Commitment Sunday. So this month we have talked about how we we are blessed to be a blessing to others. And in the newsletter for November, you received a commitment card and also a commitment flyer about how you can serve. If you did not receive these, have no fear. There will be copies on your chair next week. Um, And as part of the offering, you will also bring forward your commitment cards about how we will bless God and bless others uh, as a response to the way God has blessed us. So keep that in your mind. Next week, Commitment Sunday, I expect double attendance. You're going to bring your friends, everything. Um, So we will have Commitment Sunday. That means if it's the first Sunday of Advent next week, that today, after church, we are decorating for Christmas and Advent. So make sure after uh, service, if you have not already gone over to the hub to meet our friends at the church farm, um, take a minute, run over to the farm, meet Stephanie, meet some of the other students. I'm not sure if they have produce this morning. Um, We may have bought them all out yesterday. But (laughs) go over, say hello, take a look at the farm, uh, get introduced, and see the good work that God is doing through the farm And then come back to the worship space, and we will begin decorating for Advent, and we will have soup and sandwiches and other lovely little desserty things uh, to keep our strength going while we make the college boys put up the Christmas tree. So (laughs) it's so good to have young, strong people in church. Uh, And with that, let's see. Oh, rummage sale. I would have been in so much trouble. Rummage sale is coming up on December 4th. You may begin bringing your items up. Please make sure to call Linda Henriksen or Jackie Billings to arrange a time to come up here. Uh, Someone, Joey, should be up here during the week, Monday through Wednesday this week. Uh, It's Thanksgiving, so things might get a little Uh, sideways with schedule from 8 to noon. But if you call Jackie or Linda, they can arrange a time to meet you here to let you in. If you have furniture, let them know. It is possible that we don't need to bring your furniture up here. We can take pictures and post it online. There is a specific page on our webpage that shows you all of the items that we have so far, not including the ones that are Uh, in the fellowship area right now. And then it's also posted on Craigslist, and we will make sure that notices about how to find everything will be up on our Facebook and our webpage. Um, But good things are coming in, and if you are wise enough and savvy enough to sign up to help sort and organize, you know, sometimes things get sold before the day of the rummage sale. (laughs) I'm just saying, I learned early when I was appointed to this church, rummage sale week is good for me. Uh, So sign up to help with the rummage sale. Sign up uh, or let us know if you've got treasures that can bless someone and in turn uh, bless the church. The monies raised from our rummage sale this year will be put towards a sign, new signage out front. And so that would be lovely and super needed. Um, I think that is all of our announcements for today. I'm looking at Judy. Big thank you to our volunteers who came yesterday to help with the food pantry distribution. It is still somewhat overwhelming. Uh, When I pulled up at 8.30, distribution starts, is supposed to start at about 11. We've been starting a little earlier because the line is so long. And so when I got here at 8.30, people were already lined up through our parking lot and down Mom Mac to the church farm. And so we know that there is great need in our community. There is great need uh, at this time of the year on top of being on the outside or coming out of a pandemic. And so thank you for your very generous gifts that help support our food pantry. Uh, We are a self-supported food pantry, and that's important to understand. We do not purchase our food from the food bank because doing that sets requirements about how and to whom we can distribute 
And this way, we can give it to anyone in need, and we don't have to worry about where they live or what address or zip code they have. We can just give as God instructs. And so I thank you for your very generous support of our food pantry. Uh, again, Scout Troop 73 showed up in force to help load bags, pack bags, load cars. And so we're super grateful for that troop and the way they bless and serve our church. And so with that, um, I again welcome you into this time of worship. If you are joining us online, I especially want to um, welcome you this morning. We are working to find ways to keep our online community and our in-person community connected. And so I invite you at this time, um, if you are online, to begin passing the peace on our thread. If you are here in person, I invite you to take out your smartphone and check into our Facebook page. Greet and bless each other on that thread as well. Uh, once you have checked in online, please turn and wave your best parade wave. I know we've got it in you. <laughs> I love some of the total deadpan expressions and the hands are waving really hard. You guys are the best. Uh, with that, let's turn our thoughts and our affections to the Lord as we prepare our hearts for worship. Would you please stand and, as you are able and join me in the call to worship. I'll read the leader portion and you reply with the peoples printed in bold. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn. Oh. 
Join me in our profession of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ, and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. Our scriptures this morning come from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 9 through 10, and then Matthew, chapter 25, verses 34 through 36. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crop. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vines, and do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. And then from Matthew. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world, for I was hungry. And you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's important that we sort of finish that verse from Matthew because they ask, when did we see you sick, lost, imprisoned? And Jesus says, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. When we bless others, we bless God. I think it's very fitting and appropriate, and I love that today just sort of happened to be the meet and greet at the hub when our first scripture is from Leviticus, where it talks about when you harvest your fields, you leave some. You leave the corners, you leave the edges for those traveling through. It's a very passive sort of effortless generosity. In days of ancient Israel, in biblical times, a person's integrity and character were defined by how large those corners were. Did they leave just a little? Or did they leave large corners for all those who came through? Was it just enough to be the letter of the law, or were they generous? Were they afraid of part of the harvest just going bad and being unclaimed, gleaned, ungleaned? Or were they willing to set large portions aside 
for the poor and the homeless. And in the Leviticus passage, it's very hands-off, isn't it? You don't actually have to be involved with the people to bless them. All you have to do is not harvest your whole field. And that in and of itself is a difficult request. In a time of unpredictable famine, where they have no mass information like we get. We're already planning what kind of winter weather, harvest weather we're going to have almost 10 months in advance. We have science and technology and all of these things that sort of inform us as to how to plant and reap, what we'll need to do to take care of those crops. But in the time of ancient Israel, you're living day to day. You have no idea if there's going to be a drought or a famine. You have no idea if plague or sickness is going to ravage through the community. It behooves you to be prepared, to harvest all you can, to store what you can, to keep it set aside, to be able to provide for your household because you didn't just provide for your family. If you had property, you were responsible for providing for any servants or slaves or foreigners living in your care. You had part of the community to be responsible for. So it was important for you to harvest all that you could. But in the Levitical command, it says you can't do that. You are responsible for the poor and the foreigner traveling through. Leave the edges. Don't scavenge your own property. Make sure there is some for those who have nothing. At a time where if you were a widow or an orphan, you were dependent upon your family or your husband's family, if you were a woman, to take you in. If something happened and you had no male relative or the closest male relative wouldn't take you in, your fate was dire. That's why there are laws throughout the Old Testament about how women are taken into households. You either go back to the household of your father or your uncle or your brother or your husband or your husband's brother or your husband's father. It just depends. And when you, if you think back to the book of Ruth, and she is with her mother-in-law, and they are destitute, and she sends them out. The last son of that family has died, and she tells Ruth, Naomi tells Ruth and her other daughter-in-law, go back to your fathers. Go back to your people. I can't help you. And that's when Ruth says, whither thou goest, I will follow. It's funny to me how often that's used in a wedding ceremony, and I always feel the need to point out to the couple, you know that's a woman saying that to her mother-in-law, right? Like, (laughs) that is not about your undying love as a couple. (laughs) But okay, we're good. And so they do. They go back to Naomi's people. And it's Boaz that she goes to glean from his fields. That's how they find their kinsman redeemer, is that to support her mother-in-law, she goes to glean those edges to find help. It's important that we are not careless with our extra. And when I say that, I mean that when we have extra, we give it. We make it available to those who would need it. But then Jesus raised the stakes. We get into Matthew, and it is no longer an anonymous, passive instruction about generosity and grace and kindness. He says, if you know me, Then you feed the hungry, and you give drink to the thirsty. You clothe the naked, you take care of the poor, you visit the sick, you visit the imprisoned. This is now not about an anonymous field that you can glean from. This is about us having to be in relationship with people. It's about us being in relationship with our community. It means knowing who is in need in our community. Being proactive about it. And they are not nameless, faceless people. They are not categories of people. 
Because Jesus gives this very important instruction. He says this very clearly. When you do this for the least of these, you do it for me. So every time we've ever had an excuse about why not to get involved, what we've said is, Jesus, I don't have to see you. Jesus, I'm not responsible for you. And it's so interesting to me that when we get into those places, it's a cultural rhythm. Like this is not about shame or condemnation. It is an observation about a cultural rhythm. Leviticus talks about your extra. Leave the corners, leave the edges. What's left? Chances are that's not necessarily the finest of your crop anyway. Leave the edges, leave the corners. But when Jesus says, the least, the lost, the broken, the widow, the orphan, the criminal, the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, those are me. It's me. I want you to look me in the eye and tell me I'm not worthy of your best. That you're okay with leaving the edges in the corners. It's a startling revelation. Because I have had a great time cleaning out my closets for the rummage sale. And there are things that I pick up and I think, oh, that just needs to go directly into the trash. But there are other things in the course of my life where I have culled out closets and boxes and things. And I've looked at them and said, oh, that's just a little hole. Oh, that's just this. Nobody would even notice that. And I put it in my donate box. Things that I wouldn't wear anymore. But that's good enough for somebody else. Those are hard places of learning. We're all in different places in our discipleship, in our finances, in our responsibilities. We all have our own expectations, our own commitments. And we have to deal with those and navigate that in a way that is in, has integrity for both our families, ourselves, and for the Lord. So there's no open criticism here. There's no criticism. It's just a conversation and an, and an observation about how culturally we've fallen into this rhythm that what I cast off is good enough for somebody else who I don't know who I'm not invested in. But Jesus says that person, the least, the lost, the broken, the homeless, the hungry, the foreigner, the victimized, the voiceless, that's me. I want you to see me. I don't want them to be nameless and faceless. I don't care if you don't know who they are. When you see it happening, I want you to imagine me. I don't want to do that. And even now, standing here, I feel the weight of that, of my own blindness, my own self centeredness, my own callousness, callousness that I call generosity. See, we go back to the verse in Genesis I will bless you, I will make you famous. You'll be a great nation. I will bless you, and you will bless others, and every family on earth will be blessed because of you. So I have to start thinking about what is an actual blessing. Is it a blessing to give what's left over? For some, yes. For many, yes. For me, who grew up in a household where I stole everybody's hand-me-downs, I wanted my brother's sweatshirt even when he wasn't ready to hand it down yet. There are rhythms and there are things that we get from each other, and that is a blessing. But when it's something we've cast off with disdain or ambivalence even, is that a worthy gift for the Lord? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. We're all in such different places, but the posture of our heart is God always worthy of our first and our best. Our God's beloved always worthy of our first and our best. 
What does it look like to give sacrificially? What does it look like to live in the rhythm of heaven, the economy of heaven, where we are blessed, so we bless others? We give, we receive, we give. We give, we receive, we receive, we give. I mean, it's, it's the never-ending rhythm of God's abundance. And it can no longer be passive. Now it's community relationship. It's about investing in the people around us and seeing Jesus in every face. No matter how we feel about the circumstance. That we give with that kind of generosity, that kind of intentionality. John Wesley, famous for saying, give all you can, save all you can. Well, he doesn't, I just jumped ahead. Poor John Wesley, I misquoted him. Earn all you can, give all you can, save all you can. What do we earn? How do we earn it? Who's responsible for our our blessings, our abundance, our provisions? I think it's super easy as an American in 2021 to say, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I worked hard. I worked my way through college. I got this job. I worked hard at this job. I stayed at this job. I survived all of these terrible employers. I survived all of these terrible downturns in the economy. I did it. And if I did it, I deserve the reward for it. And we somehow become detached from the idea that we are a child of God in that space. That God sustained us. God provided for us. God made us sane when we thought we were going to lose our minds in those difficult positions. Because God sustained us, We, in turn, are the hands and feet of Christ in a hurting world, and we help sustain others. We are blessed to be a blessing. We bless God first. We remember the scripture from last week where God calls forth and says, bring your first of your tithes and your offerings of your harvest and your earnings. You bring the first part, your first and your best, to the Lord for the house of the Lord. And if you are so stirred, if you are filled with God's spirit, because then he calls forth and says, build the temple, build the ark, build the tabernacle. You who have these items, if you are a bronze worker or a metal worker or a seamstress or a tailor or you have woodworking, whatever you have, you bring it to the community to build the tabernacle because God desires to live in community with you to fellowship with you, to create family. And from that identity as being the family of God, then we remember that whatever we harvest, we leave some in the field for those who have nothing. And whatever we have, we look to the community and we see Jesus in the places where we don't want to see him and we move with compassion and justice to feed the hungry and to give drink to the thirsty and to clothe the naked. It's how we live that blessing. And we give for that blessing. This is who we are. This is not about raising money. This is not about funding a budget. It is about claiming a holy identity. It is the rhythm and the economy of heaven. It is who we are as sons and daughters of God. It is the biblical command. I find it interesting that we very, uh, almost flippantly pick and choose which commands are important to us. If any one of them is important, they are all important. And so we live in that. So here is who we are. You are a beloved child of God. You are will be made famous by the Lord. He will bless you, and you will bless others. You will be a great nation. And every family on earth will be blessed because of you. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we lift your name on high. We declare that you are good, and you are for our good, and everything we have ever received, God, any abundance, any provision, every just meet the mark need you have provided in some way. 
Lord God, we give you thanks that we live in an identity of abundance, that we have all that we need, even when we don't think we do. God, I pray that we would search our hearts to be those people that see you in every face, that look for you. When it's not easy or apparent or feel good or it presses up against the things we think we hold to be true or hold dear, that our first and only loyalty is to your heart and that we move in that, that we stand strong in that. God, I thank you for your generous heart for your people. I pray that today we would choose to be that even more. We would choose that identity. We would choose community, and we would not turn our eyes away. We love you and we bless you, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. was blind, now I'm seeing color. I was dead, now I'm living forever. I've been fair, but you were my redeemer. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I was lost, now I'm found by the Father. I've been changed from a ruin to a treasure. I've been given a hope and a future. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I am counting every blessing Counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Surely every season you are good to me. Oh, you are good to me. Oh, You were there in the valley of shadows. You were there in the depth of my sorrow. You're my strength, my hope for tomorrow. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I am counting every blessing. Every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Surely every season you are good to me. Oh, you are good to me. good to me. Surely your goodness pursues me. Surely your heart is for me. I will remember your mercy. Counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Surely every season you are good to me. Surely every season you are good to me.
Let us come into a time of prayer. Lord God, surely in every season you are good. You are good to me. You are good to us. You are faithful. You are loving. You are kind. You are just. I invite you to take a moment to do exactly that, to count your blessings. Pick up your little slip of paper. Write down one way God has blessed you this week. And if you find yourself in a place where the week has been long and hard, you can't find anything to feel good about, you are here. You are loved. You are welcome. You have a place to belong. You had the strength and the courage to get up one more day. And that is a gift. That is a blessing. Lord God, you invite us and you tell us to come with confidence and boldness to tell you our needs. Lord, sometimes we need to set that aside and say thank you. Thank you for the things that are hard. Thank you for the things that are complicated. Thank you for the things that cause me to grow. Thank you for showing yourself in impossible ways. Thank you for being the God of the harvest, the God who has promised that we are never alone, who goes before us and hems us in, who makes a way when there is none. Thank you, God, that you see us really and truly who we are, how we are, you love us into a place of transformation. You are patient and kind. Thank you, God, that you have enabled us to hear your voice, that you call us worthy to be in relationship with you. Thank you for seating us in community where we have family outside of those we were born with. Thank you for calling us worthy to serve, to give. Thank you for choosing us when we do not choose you. Thank you for not turning away when we celebrate things as our own victory and forget that you you are beside us and with us and for us and provide. Thank you for the people you have put in our lives, our friends, our spouses, our colleagues and co-workers, teachers, strangers who have smiled at us when the look on our faces said stay away. Thank you for the people who taught our Sunday school, who taught us when we didn't even know we had something to learn. They taught us by kindness and time, just being with us. Thank you for those people who listen to us and they hear what we don't know how to say. They can sift through our words and hear our heart and read our spirit, and they move with compassion on your behalf. Thank you, God, for knowing us inside and out, for knowing the things that are heavy on our heart, for willing for being willing to be silent while we say all the wrong things when we pray and still move on our behalf. 
thank you for pouring out your blessing and your intervention on Norma and Louise and Bob, Marilyn, Jason, Don and Donna. Thank you for the way you moved to heal Gary and Judy and Dwayne, Benny Kay, Greg. Thank you for Ed and Jan and Loretta, Eloy, Angie and Ray, Ken, Ted and Ida. Thank you, God. Thank you for all the ways in which you have moved and poured out your blessing. Thank you for those people who have taught us how to have faith, how to stand in integrity. Thank you, God, for those places in our lives that seem broken, that you are pouring out and making a witness and a testimony of your presence, your goodness, and your power. Thank you, God. When we don't have words, when we don't know how to share what we need, you aren't silent and you aren't removed and you aren't still. You're gentle and patient and proactive. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness, for your tenderness. I invite you to use the mentee link to share your prayer concerns, your joys, your moment of thanks, your needs. If you are here in, in person, you can call them out and we will lift them together. But I invite you to share your heart, to make your prayers known. That the joy of being in community is sharing one another's burdens, lifting one another in prayer. to care for one another and bless one another. That my brothers and I can stop drinking and come to Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. Grateful that my daughter-in-law's emergency appendectomy surgery was successful. Lord, hear our prayer. Grateful for my family near and far. Lord, hear our prayer. Ida Lazo and her upcoming treatments. Lord, give her peace. For Zeferino, Signs, Amanda, Miguel, and all in need of healing. Lord, hear our prayer. For Carla Conley. Lord, hear our prayers. For Catherine Pazin, Lord, hear our prayers. Blessed to have multiple district and region placed choir students singing with us today. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, we 
lift these things to you, the things that we have shared, the things that we don't have voice for yet, but we trust you. We know that you still hear. God, we offer you ourselves. We love you and we bless you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now, as disciples of Jesus, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. This is the time in our service where we bless God by bringing our tithes and our offerings, our gifts, and we will also bring forward our slips, reminding and thanking God for the way that he has blessed us this week. If you are with us online, I invite you to share your own blessings in the thread or with the mentee link that we might share in your blessings too. Um, each week, we collect the blessings that you put into the box and they're posted on our webpage so you can go and see how God is blessing our community. And so I invite you to come and to bring. You are welcome to leave your gifts and your offerings. Many people still mail theirs in or they give via Facebook or the web page and you may certainly do that. Um, giving is part of our biblical witness. It is how we honor our commitment to God, how we bless in the name of Jesus. So come, bring your gifts and your blessings for the Lord.
God, we bring you our first and our best of our time, our talent, our giving, our serving, our witness and testimony. Take these gifts, bless them, multiply them, do with them infinitely more than we could dream or imagine for the good of your kingdom and the glory of your name. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our closing.
Thank you.